Alright, Piss Week Runners, uh, this is my new video, I'm calling it uh, GPS Devices, Are They Hurting Your Performance? Um, so, I'll start off with my thoughts on, on them. Um, I don't have an issue with people using them, however, I think that depending on the type of athlete that you are, I, th I think um, a lot of the time it, it's not relevant. Um, with GPS, I like to call them generally pointless stats. Um, I think realistically they're designed for highly tuned athletes who need to really dial in on their performances. Um, so you're talking about the elites and that who have got their techniques right, have got their breathing right, have got <coughs> all of the fundamentals right before they start going, <coughs> what what is my watch telling me? They know what their body's telling them. They know exactly what's going on in that um, that area, um, which I call the 98%. Um, and then the 2% <coughs> is what the watch is going to tell them. I think, unfortunately, <coughs> there's far too many people using GPS devices and wanting to know everything. Um, <coughs> and I personally think that that's actually hurting a lot of people's performances because they're more worried about what the watch tells them instead of what the body tells them. Um, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, I, I run upwards of 100K mountain ultras, um, and the only thing that I've got is this. It's a $40 ASICS watch. Um, I don't use GPS, so I don't even track any runs that I do. Well, sorry, the only races are the only time I ever start the watch. So if I go out for a run during the week, which is normally an hour, um, weekends can be anywhere between two and a half and seven, um, I don't start my watch. I just go out and, <clears throat> yeah, to use the term, two feet and a heartbeat. Um, that's as long as you whack on a pair of shoes and off you go. Uh, not waiting for satellites to align and worlds to collide and strapping on 50 devices and worrying about what what this thing on my wrist is telling me um, because <clears throat> I don't see it as a beneficial thing to me. Once I <clears throat> feel that I'm comfortable enough with my own running um, where I've pretty much got the 98% right and I don't think I can improve, then I may or may not look into the <clears throat> GPS device area. But I'm not an elite athlete. Um, I'm a sub three hour marathon runner, I'm sub four hour 50k and I've run under nine and a half hours for 100k. So they're okay times but they're not fantastic times. Um, I found, I was introduced to GPS devices in 2009. I had a Polar um, device, so I had a little shoe clip and the heart rate monitor and everything. And <clears throat> I was told, yep, this would be the thing um, to improve your marathon. I'd only just started going going into marathon, or well, I was training for marathon. Um, <clears throat> and the biggest thing that I found with it is that when, when you think, oh, I'm all about the stats and you're doing number crunching and a whole bunch of other stuff um, for that sort of distance or half marathon or 10K, what, whatever it is that you're doing, um, you would think that it would be relatively accurate. And I didn't find um, any of the runs that I did, it was, a, it was accurate. I found a better way of doing <clears throat> the course measurements was hop on a bike and get a spray can and mark on the footpath. Um, you see plenty of those around still, and <clears throat> I think that's still a better way of guide, a better guide of where you're at if you're into that sort of stuff. Um, because you may run, you know, say, you know, you watch your beep um, when you've run a kilometre, but the difference between you running the first one kilometre and, and the next kilometre could be that you've run 1,010 metres in the first kilometre and you've run 1,050 metres in the second kilometre. And then the third one, you've run 980 metres. So it, I haven't found or, or heard of a device that is actually is actually accurate um, 
closest mine got was on a I was within a 35k run and at 12k it was 12k 250 meters um, and that put me off <clears throat> um, so if some if a device is going to be upwards of five percent out um, I don't think it's beneficial um, you know you might as might as well you know it's a guess so I'd rather <clears throat> go off what the body's telling me um, because in the end what your body tells you is going to be far more beneficial than what a what a watch tells you I mean there's too much variance um, it's when you go out running you know you could be running um, four minutes a K on the flat and then you've got a hill and you could be doing six minutes a K and you go oh well, I'm running six minutes a K but I want to be running four minutes a K so <clears throat> the watch tells you you got to speed up so you try and run up a hill at four minutes a K <clears throat> um, so it sort of tells you incorrect it tells you not necessarily incorrect data but it tells you that you're going slow but it also tricks your mind into thinking that you've you've got to correct that straight away um, so but you'll gain back that time quite easily over the next four or five or six k that's that's never an issue um, but it tricks the mind into thinking oh i've got to make that back up in the next kilometer so you go way too fast for the next kilometer um, <clears throat> most of the time I, I see that a lot especially in um in road road races not that i do very many of them now i'm i stick to trail um, because once i got out of the out of marathon running I, and I started running trails, my mind was opened up to the world. Um, <clears throat> and that, that was what really got me out of that stats are everything mindset. Um, when you're road running, people think um, stats are the world and <clears throat> they need to know everything. Um, but until you go out, well, from my experience, when you've gone out into the unknown, um, and you don't know how far you've run, you don't know how long you've been running for, you don't know how much vertical you've done, you don't know how much descent there is, you don't know any of that stuff, you're just, uh, you're just running. Um, that's where you really learn so much more about what's going on. Um, and for me personally, that, <coughs> you know, not starting the watch, just running, um, has been the best thing um, for my improvement. Um, it, I found that uh, running specific time uh, distances, um, so I used to go, oh, okay, I'll run 12K or run um, you know, like 5K in the morning and a 8K in the afternoon or a 12K in the afternoon or something like that, or I must run 18K on this. <coughs> I found you just go, oh, I'll run for an hour. Um, or I'll run for an hour and a half or I'll run for three hours or, and <clears throat> not take any notice about what's going on. Um, I, I certainly see runners out around Lake, Lake Tobranong, um that the watch is collecting all the data and, but they still feel the need to look at the watch every three seconds or four seconds. So I don't know over 10k when they're looking at their watch 150 times what they're getting out of it. Um, it's all going to be there at the end and you can review it at the end. Um, but I mean I can understand when I go out and trail I've gone upwards of two and a half hours without looking at my watch. Um, and generally over the an hour I might look at it twice. Um, but when I did a road run recently I found that I was look. I looked at my watch about eight or nine times, and I I was so angry with myself because I'm thinking I'm doing this out of pure boredom. Um, I don't care what the watch is telling me, but I, I'm forced to look at it because I've the mind's gone to sleep, so it's giving me something to do. Um, <clears throat> I was chugging along at a, at the same pace the whole way. I felt comfortable. I was doing what I wanted to do, and you know, in the end, I because I don't track my sessions. Um, what was looking at the watch going to tell me? Nothing. Um, <clears throat> the other thing too that I've noticed is that they seem to be targeted now at a lot of people who <clears throat> um, are either starting out in fitness or, um, you know, 
they they're wanting to run a certain distance for a, you know the first time like a marathon or half marathon or something like that <clears throat> um so people go into the sports store and they get sold for whatever you know $300 Garmin or a Sunto or Polar or whatever devices they sell um <clears throat> and they've got no idea about what's going on but the person who sells it to them goes oh it's fantastic and does this and does that a lot of cool features but um <clears throat> and they go oh yeah they're accurate and they a whole lot of phony baloney you know it's, it's retail you got to you got to make things up to to sell stuff um <clears throat> and then these same people are going out there and when they run their marathon they're whinging that at you know their their watch is telling them that they've run 42.195k but they've still got half a k to go um or they've got a kilometer to go or something so they'd be have a big whinge to the manufacturer saying well your device isn't accurate um and that's why I think you can't you can't heavily rely on it. Um, the other thing too is that <clears throat> I've, the battery life. Um, now, yes, this is one of those things where oh well, you charge your phone every day, but I mean I I couldn't be plugging my phone into uh, not my phone my watch into into the computer every day to download stuff that I'm not going to look at or charging it every day and. Or going out for a run, knowing whether or not the battery is going to survive or not. Um, the the watch I've got here at the moment, um, you know, the little lithium batteries that they have in them, it's been going for two and a half years. Um, probably might get another year, might get two years out of it, but um, I never have to worry about the battery. And if it if it dies, it dies, um, because I'm not relying on it and what it's telling me. If the thing dies, I'm not going to be in a in in a state where I go where I panic, and I think that's the other thing too is that people rely too heavily on what the watch tells them, but then if the watch dies or the malfunctions or there's an error or something like that, they freak out because they're 23 kilometres into a marathon, and you've got 19 to go, and everything you you're relying heavily on what that watch was telling you. But because it's died, you've now got to rely on what your body tells you and you haven't listened to your body um, since before you bought the device. Uh, now, a lot of, I'll admit a lot of people get, get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, I'd love to hear <coughs> those, those people say what, um, how much it's helped them. Um, not, a, not against them, I just, I just don't like them. Um, but realistically, I think that for the majority of runners, um, it's it's really just an expensive pencil and paper. Um, it's really an expensive, you know, it's a three hundred dollars stopwatch. You know, stopwatch costs you ten bucks. A pencil will cost you about twenty cents, and a piece of paper what, about one cent. Um, you know, it seems. Um, that the old old way, say the old way, um, of writing stuff down on 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 a book or punching it into an Excel spreadsheet or something, I've uh, I find is far better. Um, but you know, um, I whether i've i'm not evolving with running i'd rather more the traditionalist um version and sticking with that not moving ahead with all the fancy pants technology um i i think it's just i, th I think it's taking away from what running really is <clears throat> i think more worried about what the watch tells you instead of what the body tells you and about the running and, and yes it's all you know and it's, it's like, oh, well, I, you know, it's just click share or whatever it is um, and share it to Facebook or Twitter or whatever, share it with your friends and stuff, do comparisons. It's probably good in a social sense that way. Um, but I think also that, you know, it, 
is it really about is it really about the running or is it more about oh I ran six thousand kilometers and you only ran four thousand kilometers um, in a year I don't know <clears throat> um, anyway so that's that's just what I think about it um, I'm going to move on to just some articles that I've looked at online um, from running coaches a couple of athletes just on their thoughts on why they don't use GPS devices and um, what their thoughts are about um, about them but that's that's my little spiel so I'll move on to that okay so for this section I did a bit of a look on Google just looked up a couple of articles um, people who are uh, I've got the same mindset as me on um, GPS actually hurting performances may or may not use them um, and just on their thoughts just to you know give, give this a bit of a boost um, first one I have got here I've just made a few notes I won't go too heavily into them I'll put the links in the um, in the description of the video so you can look at those yourself um, first one I've got is called The Lost Art of Running by Feel and Why I Dislike GPS Watches. Um, that's by a guy named Jason Fitzgerald. Um, he's a 239 uh, marathon runner. Um, so he's, he's someone who knows what he's doing. Uh, and so his story basically goes, look, last Christmas he treated himself to a Garmin 610. Um, and after wearing it for three weeks, he's basically put it back in the box and never touched it again. Um, he's gone, you know, it's got some cool features, it looks fancy, it's, you know, all that sort of stuff, but, um, which is a lot better than he said, than his $30 Timex watch. Um, but he's saying after over 15 years of running without one, the reliance on it is actually making him a worse runner. So he's stopped it, he's gone back to running by feel. <clears throat> um, he's saying running by feel and relying on internal data is a far more effective way to train. Um, ignorance is often bliss and effort matters far more than specific splits. So I'm back to my trusty Timex and I couldn't be happier. Um, so he talks a little bit about how he learned to run and stuff. So in high school they um, ran for time rather than distance and stuff like that. So as an example, they used a, a four mile um, loop to say, okay, well, we, would, we didn't care whether it took you 32 minutes, took you 30 minutes, whatever. Um, he's saying there's no pace calculators, no GPS. Um, there was no one saying, oh, well, you did in this time, you did in that time, you know, doing all these comparisons, no one cared. Um, and, uh, what really mattered was, you know, if you would run easy, you ran easy. You, did, you didn't look at your watch every two seconds. Um, <clears throat> he goes on to say that they're not accurate anyway, which is actually very true. Um, recent example I saw of this, um, I mean, this. everyone who wears a GPS watch knows they're not accurate. That's, whether you want to believe it or not, that's, that's up to you. Um, my, the example I'll use is a pro runner who ran the Hong Kong 100k um, recently and he had said at the end of that that his watch said that he'd done 59 miles and he said yeah okay there's GPS error or you know GPS data error um, so in an ideal world 100k is 62 mile so being 3 mile out or 5k that's that's a fair way over 100k um, to be out 5% uh, but anyway, um, his example that he uses in his article is when he went to a track and was going to do a mile um, at 1,511 metres on that track. The Garmin told him, you've done a mile, uh, which is 1,609. Um, he doesn't believe that it being off by 6% is acceptable. Um, and given that, you know, a track, open air, level there's there's nothing stopping that signal from being 100 percent um, another one is where he does a 10 mile loop and uh, around 69 to 72 minutes um, his garmin tells him it's 8.9 so you know that's i mean that's just him 
Um, it talks about shaking his confidence um, because he's he thinks he's running one time. The watch tells him another. The the time's going to f- the I guess the pace fluctuates. I I don't know. I don't use them. I have in the past. I used one back in two thousand nine for Polar, but um, I would have told you about that earlier. Um, it talks about bad data and bad decisions. Um, basically saying that his your internal data is going to be a far more better way of judging your performance than what the watch tells you. Um, but I think the best the best thing that he wraps up with in this part is that as long as you use your Garmin appropriately, take the take the data with a grain of salt and refer to it later, not mid run, um, then it can be helpful. <clears throat> Which I think is a pretty fair comment. Um, next one is called "Don't Be a Slave to Your Garmin," as by um, by blokes who coach Jeff. Um, he's written, I believe, he's the one who's written a number one bestseller on Amazon. Um, <clears throat> he's saying, look, GPS watches have revo- revolutionised the way of running, um, but um, so runners are becoming um, completely dependent on their watches, sometimes to the detriment of their training progression and late racing skills. Uh, it can be. It is possible that becoming too reliant on your GPS device can actually hinder your fitness and race times. So he talks about some of the drawbacks. He goes consistently adjusting your pace to match the GPS current pace. Um, I guess those who, those of you who use that would know what he's talking about. Um, <clears throat> saying the Garmin will receive a satellite signal every one to two seconds to optimize conditions. Um, you know, so there's going to be times where there's lost lost signal, so it's going to do a rough guess, um, or it'll think you've completely stopped. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> it, it's hard for me to comment on any of this because I don't use them. I, I think they're completely useless. If you if you're guessing, if you're using a you know a few hundred dollar device to guess what you're doing, then you know your brain's going to do the same job. Um, so he's saying, what can you do to counter the dependency? He's saying, don't be a slave to the pace. You know, um, listen to your breathing, feel the rhythm in your legs, the motion in your arms. And the first few goes, that that will seem unusual, and you probably won't get it right. But by the third or fourth or fifth time, that will be. Um, you'll notice the improvements. Um, certainly, that's the case with me. Um, it's I found that so much better. Listen to what, what your body tells you, adjust your strides, adjust how your arms are swinging, control your breathing, a whole bunch of other stuff. Stuff that the watch isn't going to tell you how to do. Um, and thing, he talks about not learning how to pace yourself. And, yeah, keep, keep looking at your watch going, oh, what does the watch tell me I'm running? What does the watch tell me I'm running? You, know, you should know, ideally, um, what pace you're running. You know, so you should know roughly what your heart rate's going to be while you're running along. Um, I generally, mine's now lower that I'm not um, road running. When I was road running, my heart, continuous heart rate was a lot higher, but I used to try and focus on a range of about 150 to 160. Um, And when I would do a test, I would generally be in that range. Um, Now that I do trail running at a Yes, there's a slower pace, but the, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's lower, but the actual heart rate sits lower now. Um, sometimes it'll be about 140, sometimes it can be 120. Um, but generally I will know, depending on what type of terrain and what type of um, surface I'm on, uh, I can generally give you a rough guide on what my, heart, what my heart rate is. And then generally it's within 10 beats. So same thing as the road. Um, they're saying always, always pushing the easy days and not listening to the body. So people are whacking on a watch and they're going out and it should be just been easy 30 minutes, but they're going, oh, I'm running slow, I'm running slow. My watch is telling me this, watch is telling me this. Um, <clears throat> so, so they neglect to listen to what the body tells them, they listen to what the watch tells them. Um, you know, that's... That's not what easy runs are about. Easy runs are whack on a pair of shoes and go for a run. 
um, <clears throat> what so they talk about you know uh, you know he said it's got nothing to do with the pace nothing to do with the speed um, when you free yourself from constant data of a GPS watch on an easy run you learn to listen to your body and maximise the value of each mile on your run as opposed to being a slave to the inconsequential data and hindering your progression um, <clears throat> he's saying look no doubt they've made training and logging and stuff easier, um, but basically saying you should just throw on a pair of shoes and go. And that's that's exactly what it's saying. They talk about a term called running naked, um, and that's saying running without a GPS device or a watch, not actually running and doing nudie runs. Um, there's another one here, just the last one I'll wrap up quickly with. Uh, <coughs> talks about reasons to run without a GPS um, the guy talks about the battery saying that GPS watches are generally going to last 6 to 24 hours depending on how heavily you're using it, what features you got on I guess um, so you got to plug it in, you got to charge it all the time um, you run the risk of um, so you run the risk of it running out of charge, basically, um, while you're doing a performance. That's going to be more applicable, obviously, to ultra runners who could be out there for 15 hours, could be 24 hours, could be more. Um, <clears throat> whereas a little nickel-sized battery um, could last you months, years. Uh, um, the little, this one here that I've got at the moment, a little ASICS watch, $40 job. Um, my battery's been going for about two and a half years. Uh, so, you know, I know it's not going to die on me anytime soon. Uh, he, talks about, he talks about the being off by up 5%, so I won't go through that again. Um, the pace changes. Uh, this is one where I think certainly I was affected by it when I used mine um, so you know you'll it receives an estimate and you might go up at, you might be running along at four minutes a k um, then you go up to a slight incline and it's like oh it tells me I'm 440 I want to be running four minutes so it tells the brain oh I'll quick pick up the pace go fly try and fly up a hill at four minutes a k not taking into the fact that when you go down the other side of that hill you're going to probably run at 320 comes out at four minutes in the end doesn't it so, um, and so he re goes, re goes over the battery thing, um, a signal, you don't have to worry about a signal if you run with a normal watch, you just press start and off you go. Um, so about when to run without a GPS, they talk about track workouts, saying it's measured, um, it's a measured 400 metre track, um, and easy runs. So saying if you head out, for, it's better to say, oh, okay, I'm going to run for 45 minutes um, instead of, oh, I want to run five mile. <clears throat> and races, well, you don't really need it unless you're really dialing into your data. Um, most runners aren't. And trail runs, depending on where you are, the trees, rocks, you know, caves, you can, and there's anything goes with trail running. Um, you, it may or may not get a signal um, at all. I know when I've tried to do some recording off my phone, um, it it loses signal. It goes, where am I? And I could be going under very light tree work. So, yeah, that that's just what some, some of the ones I've looked at. And, um, yeah, so have a look at them. They're, they're actually quite informative and see what you think. All right, so that's my <clears throat> little bit on the um, GPS devices. Obviously, some people are for them, some people are against them. I'm obviously against them. Um, I believe in the, <clears throat> you know, what they call the lost art of running by feel. I think that's 
technology is sort of ru ruining um, sport and performances, but you know, other people think otherwise, and yeah, good luck to them. So anyway, that, that's that's my piece. Um, hopefully you found it informative, and I I recommend you have a look at the <coughs> the links. Just obviously there's hundreds of them, but there's three of them that I've put in the description. Um, they're certainly certainly worth a read. Might open a few eyes, and uh, I'll have <coughs> a couple of other videos coming up. Um, one will be about um, qualifiers, qualifying standards, um, more specifically about Olympics, but I will throw in a bit about World Championships and Commonwealth Games. Um, and the other one will be about uh, the elite start and priority start, um, certainly in relation to marathon. Um, I think there needs to be something said about that too. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.